Today we're going to show you one of the oldest racetracks in the world. And the time that I ran a race there. Welcome to Around the World with Joshua and Alyssa. I was just watching our intro video again, and that food looked really good. Was that at the lounge in Korea, I think? I think South so. South Korea. Uh, anyway, okay. So we're going to show you something else from Greece today. Last time we looked at the ancient city of Corinth. Today we're going to show you a location that is not too far from Corinth. In fact, if you read in your Bible about Corinth, one of the places that um, Paul also went was called Achaia, I believe. And I think that is close to where we're going to show you today. If I'm wrong, I'm sorry. But you won't know the difference unless you look it up. Anyway, we're going to show you the ancient st stadium of Nemea. This is uh, a picture, uh, like a diagram of what it looks like. This stadium is typical of stadiums in Greece in that they were long and they had um, different features that were similar to what we're going to show you here because games, races, and that kind of thing were very popular in Greece back in the day. And so they had a lot of these racetracks. A similar thing for today would be like you go all over the U.S. and you find football stadiums, basketball stadiums, those kind of things. That was what they had in Greece too, not those types, but they had like big places for all sorts of games and places where spectators could watch. So this here is right outside the stadium. This is like the locker room <laughs> of their day. So this area here would have been enclosed and they would have gotten ready in here for the games. And then they would have walked through this tunnel which led to the actual stadium itself. And this is really, really well preserved. Mm -hmm. Probably because it's through um, a hill mm -hmm. and so it's not like it got run down or anything, but it's really cool to walk through it. Um, this this uh, tunnel is like 150 feet long or something. It's quite lengthy. Mm -hmm. And we're going to show you a video next of when we get to the other side of the tunnel and those who ran the marathon and the 10K while we were out there in Athens, we're going to show them coming out through the tunnel while we cheer for them. stuck out your hand to high five this one lady and she didn't she do it. it. <laughs> that is funny. Like, oh, I'll go on to the next person. Awkward. <laughs> so that's the tunnel coming out. This is what it looks like. You can see off to the left there's like places where people can sit and watch the games and there's um, where I took this picture standing is right inside the track. So now if we were to turn around this is what the track looks like. Da -da -da. And it doesn't look like much today, but it's, what is, what, what, what were you expecting? Something <laughs> long and flat. <laughs> uh, look on the, if you look down in the bottom left corner, there's like a gutter that runs the whole length there. So that water could run through there. So they, smart. They just carved it, get thirsty. carved it out of stone. And I don't know exactly how they supplied water to it. and what all they used it for but it's really well preserved the track itself was about 600 feet long so think of, of the length of about two football fields anyone who says a football field is 300 feet long is actually wrong because a football field is actually 360 feet long oh. yeah because they never count the end zones Oops. which are 10 um, 30 feet long on each side. So a football field is actually 360 feet long. 
So this is a little shorter than two football fields in length. And um, something else that was associated with the games in Greece were, was the worship of their gods uh, in, in Greek mythology. And so nearby this track, there's also a temple to Zeus, which we didn't go and visit that. So I don't have any pictures of it. But when they were participating in these games, they were all to honor the gods. And so when you think about that in the biblical context, when Paul is talking about racing, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith, um, and pressing on toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus, he is taking something from what the Greeks knew about racing, competing for their gods, and he's applying it to the Christian life and saying in the same way, we need to treat life as if it's a competition, a race in honor of our God. And so once you understand that about the Greek games, it's really interesting how it all ties in. So we did have a race on this track just for fun. And so I thought, well, I like to run short distances not the big long ones and so I decided I wanted to participate in the race even though I only had flip-flops and so here you go, Four, three, go! I think we only ran half the trek I'm pretty, sure, track I'm pretty sure we started kind of on the one end and our finish line was the midpoint, uh, thankfully. <laughs> but yeah, that was fun. And back in the day when people won competitions, they were given a crown of like, what did they call those other leaves? Um, olive leaves. Yeah. They made them crowns of olive branches and leaves. But they also would make them crowns of celery, which I didn't know that until we went to Greece. I thought it was always just the olive uh, crowns. And so they had this celery crown outside the stadium and they put it on me and uh, Alyssa's brother got a picture of it for us. <laughs> it was pretty cool. It was like this really thick wreath of celery. <laughs> well, I mean, it has nice leaves on it. Yeah, it You let does. it sit long enough, it gets soft, so yeah. perfect. Yeah, <laughs> and it, it fit really nice. But anyway, so that was my my award for the race. But that is the stadium of Nemea, and it is not one of the more well-known tracks. I mean, we never talk about the, the Nemean Games. We're always talking about the Olympic Games. Um, but this was, like, one of the top five or something games that took place in Greece and so yeah we went by and we saw this track for a few minutes yep and you surprised everybody they didn't know you're gonna be so fast in flip-flops <laughs> I didn't tell people that I can run short distances <laughs> kept it a secret up until then <laughs> surprise yeah. that was a funny time yeah okay we have the last part of our story today and we were talking about some of the more um kind of scary, exciting things that had happened to the missionaries and how um, Abner's father-in-law had been doing a delivery. Remember, he was in his van and all these oxen were surrounding his van and they got closer and closer and one of them even knocked the mirror off of his van. And I'm sure he was really nervous. I would have been really nervous if there were that many big animals right outside my vehicle. But thankfully, the rancher came by and he was able to get some of the oxen out of the way so then Abner's father-in-law could finish the drive home. But things like that happen to missionaries all the time. They also had another story about how um, Abner's wife's mother was out walking and she needed to go from one building to another building and it was during a rainstorm. So she was hurrying pretty fast on the sidewalk when all of a sudden right in front of her, zap, was a lightning strike. And then they had no electricity for all of their buildings, but it happened like right in front of her. And she was so thankful for God's protection and that she hadn't been just a little bit farther forward and that that lightning didn't strike her. But they they had, they said there are lots and lots of stories that you could hear about the way God had protected them and cared for them. And we've kind of learned that as we hear lots of stories about missionaries, that it's really amazing to hear how God took care of them. 
So here's something kind of cool. Since this missionary, since Abner is kind of a nowadays missionary, he has a special message that he wanted to have told to all the kids when we tell the story. So I will read it to you. And today Abner is still kind of in charge of um, helping to get these different kids programs going in Central and South America. And he's in charge of 20 different countries. So he like checks in with these different countries and helps them get their programs going to help kids learn stories from the Bible and hear missionary stories like this one too. So here is his special message that he wrote down and wanted you guys to hear. He said, you can trust God. If God's plan is for you to become a missionary, you do not need to be afraid of raising the money to go. Remember, he was pretty afraid about that. He didn't really want to live without money and he was nervous. So he's telling you, don't be afraid of it. You don't need to be afraid of dangerous situations. You can trust God in the storms. And he lived through some really tough storms, literal storms. Be willing to give your life to the Lord. If you obey him, God will use you in great ways. You should build good habits of memorizing Bible verses and having daily quiet time with God. Learn all the languages you can. If your parents speak another language, you should learn it and never forget their language. Speak it as well as you can. And that was important for him too, because he got to speak um, Spanish and he got to use it where he lived. And then when he went to California with his sister, and then when he went back and served God in Central America, and now he gets to use it a lot as he's in charge of the Central and Southern America um, little the kids clubs. But by the time this story, while when they wrote it, Abner was getting older. And that means by today he's even older yet. And um, so his message too is that we need more people to replace the missionaries who are out on the mission fields because they won't be able to be there forever and we need more people. So maybe you'll be the next person to serve and to be a teacher for kids around the world. You just never know. So you can practice today. You can practice by sharing the good news of the gospel with somebody else, by maybe sharing a story about a missionary and how God protected them. You can also prepare by learning Bible verses by trying to learn a language. That's always a good thing to do. You never know how God might use that. And then maybe one day when you get a little bit older, then maybe you'll get to be kind of like a camp counselor or somebody like that, somebody who can teach other people about God. And then maybe some day God will call you to be a missionary, just like Abner. So that is our nowadays missionary and kind of a cool story about someone who's connected with the people that put out these stories for us. So that's the Pineda's Faith in the Storm from the Dominican Republic. And that's kind of cool because we're going to go there sometime oh. soon. But just forget that. We'll tell you about that soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is cool. All right, because it is a week five of our series, five week series. We are going to review the missionaries who we looked at from the last four weeks. Mm -hmm. And we are going to start with a group that we got to be part of. And that is the missions trip team from our church this summer in Denver, Colorado. And as I mentioned, I'm not in the picture because we sent them off to Colorado and we stayed home so baby Jocelyn could be born. And then, then you flew out. Then I joined them later. <laughs> But we got to work with uh, Deaf Ministries, so they did a VBS for about three days, and then when I arrived, we spent several days working on Deaf Puppetry. And so we did the sign language for these different puppet shows, and recorded them on videos, and then we are going to uh, give those videos to the missionary there so that he can distribute them to people around the world and show them how they can use uh, ASL puppets in their ministry, or not just ASL, to any sign language. Mm -hmm. So you can pray that that ministry would continue to uh, expand beyond us, and that more people around the world would use puppets for serving, communicating with the deaf people, um, just like we got to for a few days. Mm -hmm. Then we talked about my parents. Dave and Gloria and Levy, and um, as they're traveling around the states, and then especially we're praying for my dad as he gets ready to take his big trip to the Congo. 
Yes. All of a sudden, <laughs> I couldn't think of what Oopsie. country it was. Yes. Yeah, as he gets ready to take his trip, because that is coming up here really soon. Does he soon. leave next week? I think so. I think so. I think it, it's pretty soon. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll be praying for them, um, for him for safety, and he's really excited to get to go to Africa. Mm-hmm. I think he has never been to Africa. <laughs> I think he has not either. So. <laughs> yep. So we'll be praying for him and then for my mom as she stays back stateside and keeps working here. And then the Mackey family with International ASL Ministry. And that is who our missions trip team worked with when we were in Colorado. So Pastor Mackey is the one on the left there in the purple shirt. And he is the one who will be distributing those uh, deaf puppetry videos that we made. And as you can see, they have a wonderful big family. We got to meet them here just a few weeks ago. Alyssa got to meet them for the first time. Mm -hmm. And you can pray for them that, well, a big one is they just need more help. They need more people who are willing to work with deaf ministry. And um, because right now he is helping lead a church and oversee an international ministry to the deaf. So part of it is just they need more workers. And um, also with everything that they're doing, that they would just be able to stay on top of everything and get done what needs to be done because it is a big mission field. And lastly, we told you about Rhonda Green on Guam and we can praise the Lord because uh, what was it the typhoon Mm -hmm. came through this summer they actually just had another one oh really but it just it went a little bit east of them so it didn't hit them directly but they had all the the mess still from some of it all the rain and flooding and stuff (laughs) but praising the Lord that despite that uh, he protected them he has been providing for them and people have been getting saved this year, a lot of people. And so praising the Lord for that, uh, but also praying for her as she is teaching uh, in the college this fall, a few classes. And also she is going on a short missions trip to one of the outer islands. And so pray that that would go well and that they would be able to accomplish what it is that God wants them to do. And so yeah. Well, thanks for co- for coming and watching. You'll have to come back next time to see what missionary story we have, what person we have to talk about. And more about Greece, because we have just barely told you about all the things in Greece that we got to experience and see. There's a lot of really cool things. A lot of really old things, <laughs> yeah. which is fun too. A lot of old rocks. <laughs> Make sure you come back next time to see more. Bye. Ciao.